Hello everybody, I am John Betterwaffles Algets, and today we are talking about this desert windy path video speed development thing that I did like almost two months ago, but we're gonna forget about that. Uh so this speed development was specifically done because of me being kind of like called out in the comments of some of my previous speed developments of people saying like, oh, all your maps look the same. They're all just like towns or routes in forests. So I decided that I was going to try something a little bit different. And I think that I both succeeded and failed in this endeavor. So let's just jump right into it. So first things first is I started off with, you know, your usual large size. And I wanted to go with sort of a desert path feel. The reason for this being, I thought to myself, what's the furthest away from a forest that you could possibly get? A desert. Probably could have done like a water path or something like that, which might just be seeing. But the reason why I specifically chose a desert path and chose to do it like this is because one of my one of my favorite ways of creating maps is doing this sort of layered, rocky terrain kind of look. And you see it a lot in whenever I do like caves or things of that nature, I kind of do this technique and it's just something that gives your map a little bit of depth. Um, and it's also rather easy to achieve. It's just a little bit tedious. Um, so the first thing you do obviously is you draw your initial outline of the area where the player is able to actually go. Now, again, I'm trying to follow my sort of rule of thumb of keep it no less than two tiles wide. Um, there's been some talk online recently of the three tile rule, which I don't necessarily subscribe to. Uh, I think that two tiles is plenty, but realistically just play it by ear and do whatever you think is the most comfortable and fits the style of map that you're doing the most. Now I'm trying to like give the map in this case, a lot of like variations. So the player isn't just following like one linear path, although it is, it is admittedly like an extremely linear map, but what I'm doing is I'm introducing these sort of side paths and sort of other areas that you can go to, which kind of gives you the illusion of freedom of choice. It's a trick that is extremely easy and extremely powerful because it allows your players to feel like the map isn't as linear as it actually is, which is something that we should all kind of be striving for in our map creations. We don't want things to feel like they're being kind of railroaded into going their one specific location. Also, here's a, a little bit of an aside, a little bit of a tangent. Pay attention to the date down in the corner of the screen. Just keep that kind of in the back of your mind while we watch. Now, again, here, here I'm talking about, I'm doing these like different layers, these different elevation sort of areas. And again, it just kind of makes it feel like you're in much more of like a Canyon. It gives, it gives the map depth, um, which is something that beginner map makers don't always think about doing, but is a really, really easy trick for making your maps look a lot more impressive than they actually are, which I'll tell you right now, as a map maker, that is one of the things that I strive to do the most, which is just make my make my maps look as impressive as I can uh, while doing as little work as humanly possible. <laughs> uh, funny because it's true. Anyways, uh, so I was looking at this map and I was thinking, you know, eh, see, I mean, it, it looks like a desert path. What am I going to do? I'm going to throw some palm trees here or there. Like, how can I make this a little bit more interesting? And this is where I think I kind of fail a little bit in my styling. I start throwing in these grassy patches, which those of you who know how I make maps will know what's coming after the grassy patches come in. But it, as much as it kind of causes me to fail in my initial mission statement for this map, I think it gives it a really cool, really interesting look. And that is that I'm kind of combining this desert and forest aesthetic kind of making this feel like almost like an oasis a you know secret hidden area in the middle of this much larger desert where flora and fauna are able to flourish and i was like okay that's cool i'll, I'll keep going with that but then i started thinking to myself how else can i sort of liven this area up and make it someplace that's fun for players to explore and as you'll see in a moment, one of the things that I do is I start introducing buildings. 
So making it so that this area is populated. Now, again, that's a really easy sort of trick. It's not something that you can do all the time because obviously not every area of your world is going to be populated. But when you've got like a situation like this where maybe, you know, you've got a few settlers, they're living in this area, they're kind of separated from each other, but they're close enough that they could still kind of be a community. Um, it, it just sort of livens the area up. And if you've got like an in-game explanation for why people live in this area, great, even better. Maybe there's a specific story element that brings a player here. Either way, good fun. In my head, I kind of imagined this sort of desert path area. As I said, it, it, is fairly linear, but if you notice, there's only kind of really one way in and one way out. In my head, I imagine that that this is kind of a starter area. So the, this house specifically that we're building right here, the player, maybe that's where they start. Um, and then, so these, this is kind of the, the f first area that they go to, their first steps in a much larger journey. Um, and so... It's, a, it's kind of a nice area where a player could get acclimated to how they move, what kind of things they could be looking for, you know, all those sort of, sorts of beginner ideas. Um, notice that the uh, date rolled over from the 18th to the 23rd. That's actually because I uh, was in Oregon for like five days. And so I wasn't able to finish the map before I had to go get on a plane. Um, and I literally just left my computer like on, which is really bad. You shouldn't do that, but I did. And so that I could just pick up recording basically immediately where I was. Um, and so let's kind of pause on this final map here. So as you can see, I added in quite a few details to just kind of liven things up a little bit. Let's go back here a little bit and let's continue to take a look. So as you notice this, this forest area, it's got all the like weeds and overgrown grass and things of that nature. Again, just kind of making it feel a bit more lively. You've got the rocks and everything like that. Again, to sell that this is a wild area. And when I place things like that, I do my best to try to stay away from logical patterns because nature doesn't necessarily have logical patterns. There is a sort of sense of uh, logical randomness that comes from nature. Things appear and exist in places that have a logical explanation, but they don't all fall kind of in the exact same place. You will not see a lot of like, you know, tight patterns in nature, except for, you know, on like the petals of flowers and things of that nature. In terms of like where trees are, where rocks are, things of that nature, it's all fairly random. But again, there's a logical explanation for why those things are the way that they are. I also... Let's move even further back here. Just a second. You you saw it first. What second? Is you notice I got this like weird ruinous thing there. Now, when I was making this map again, this isn't for a game project that I've got going or anything like that. But I thought in my head, like, why, why would this sort of ruinous thing be here other than just it looks cool? And you think in your head, like, well, maybe... Maybe there's some like ancient inscription on it that talks about some like prophecy that spurs the player character on to greater things and furthers their journey forward. Uh, it's just those kind of things are small little story pieces that you can bake into your map. Or maybe that weird shrine thing is the first step in a late game side quest. So when the player first encounters it, it has no meaning or really any rhyme or reason to them until they come back at a later point. These are things to be thinking about while you're making your maps. Obviously, if you're actually making your maps for a proper game project, you've got a more set plan for why those things exist than me just haphazardly throwing it onto a map. But it's still something to think about. Because your beginner maps, your player might go back and visit those maps in the late game or might want to have a reason to do so. So it's kind of baking in these reasons for players to go places is just smart map making. And again, it's another way of tricking the player into thinking that they have more control over what is happening than what they actually do. Because 
you put something like that there, it's going to entice players to go and check it out. And it's something that you are intending for them to do, but they feel like they made the choice to go do that. But you've kind of, you've given them that nudge as it were, if any of that is making sense. So I'm placing more rocks around, everything's like that. Again, keeping with that logical randomness. And this is when I decide to introduce these sort of dead trees. Again, it sells this idea of this being kind of a foresty desert place where there is life, but it's still a rather harsh area for nature to live. And on top of that, it just makes it look a lot more visually interesting. So something to keep in mind, look for the tiny details when you're making your maps to try to just, you know, make them feel a bit more unique. Here's another example of that. You've got these tiny little dead bushes. You know, these kind of make me think, well, maybe this was formerly a super like overgrown forested area and then something happened and it's been killing off the life in this area. Maybe that could be part of the plot. You know, maybe this is an ancient area that, you know, there was once a, a like weird plague that's been killing off the wildlife and the nature in the area. And so what used to be this extremely lush wooded grove is now very quickly finding its way into being a, uh, you know, desert wasteland. So all things to think about. And I'm just curious what you guys thought of this map. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and, you know, leave me a comment letting me know what sort of stuff you would like to see moving forward. And I don't just mean like as speed developments or anything like that. Uh, I'm not going to be doing like really really specific RPG maker tutorials. Like don't go down there and be like, Hey, can you make a, can you make a tutorial on how to do a boss that does this one specific thing? That's not my way of doing things. I could recommend eight or nine different channels that would be able to tell you that sort of stuff and does that sort of thing. But what other sort of maybe game engines would you want me to cover? What other programs would you want me to cover? I've got a few in the pipeline that I'm working on. I apologize for the lack of videos on this channel because of that but I'm a very, very busy boy and I'm working hard. So here's to hoping that in the near future, I'm going to be delivering on a few of those ideas. But until then, as I said, just let me know what you want to see down in the comments below. And I hope that you all have a good one.